Hi everyone, in this video we're actually going to do some proper programming and we're going to utilize the connection we made last session with the My Rigid Body component to programmatically move our rigid body with the transform tool um, to make our player move left and right. So pretty much just going to be in mono developer in this session. So what I need to do is um, just press enter a few times in my void update. So if we remember this is called every frame. So if you've got a game running at 20 frames per second, everything here is happening 20 times. Obviously, if you've got a game running at 100, it's happening a lot faster. The more things you put here, obviously, the more taxing it's going to be on the processing. Modern day computers can handle quite a bit. Sometimes, however, we're deploying for a phone, etc. We need to just cater to the lowest common denominator, so maybe that three-year-old iPhone. Um, even though you might have the latest and greatest Android. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a series of if, else if, and else, else statements. And what this is going to do is basically cascade or waterfall the idea of what we're looking at doing. And if something doesn't happen, then something else will happen, or otherwise this will happen. All right, so I start typing if. Um, so this is my if statement. If input dot get axi raw. So remember we looked at this last lesson where Unity's got the built-in components. If input get axi raw. I'm just going to use an up and down arrow. Press tab. Get axi raw. Um, I'm going to do another space. So I'm already in brackets. So I'm going to put it inside another brackets. And uh, let's just look that up. So if we go to again edit and project settings and input. We can see that we've got the horizontal is the name we're looking for and stupidly we could modify that if you are crazy uh, I recommend you don't obviously but we're going to utilize horizontal, vertical and later on jump as well so just go back to here so it's already laid out the end of the parentheses for us so if input.getAxis uh, and we're looking at the horizontal horizontal great if you are prone to making spelling errors, feel free to double click, copy and paste horizontal. So if we get the horizontal button, so we're looking at left to right or A and D, and what we're going to say is, is greater than, sorry, I need to get this parenthesis out of the way. It's going to mess us up otherwise. Um, horizontal is greater than zero. F. Okay, so basically, if we've pressed a button that's greater than zero, it means that we're going to want to do something. I'm just going to close my bracket here. Awesome. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to create a little sub function. So this is the curly braces. This is one the one next to the P on most keyboards. And you'll see again that it creates the curly brace on the other side by default. And you'll also notice that there's the um, the, the indentation of the lining is happening by default. This is awesome. It makes everything easier to read. If we're just typing this up in Notepad, it, um, it can be pretty tricky to read, same as the colors. Okay, so what we're looking at doing is we're accessing this My Rigid Body on the player controller. So, Rigid Body. Uh, so, what we're looking at doing is we're going My Rigid Body dot velocity so we want to make it move equals and it's a new and we're saying it's a vector 3 and we've got a vector 2, 3 and 4 um, it has a different series of points that we can utilize so vector 2 would be x and y um, vector 3 x, y, z and to be honest vector 4 is beyond my knowledge right now anywho I'm going to use vector 3 and we're going to be looking at three different things to put into um, my next set of parentheses, so these are the three criteria. So the first thing is, what am I doing, and this should explain actually, what am I doing with the X component? There we go, press down. Um, what are we doing with X value, Y value, and Z value? So a float, um, before we declared a public float, and I spoke about an int, basically a float is a decimal point, and an integer is a whole number. Okay, so we can have 0 0.001, as a float, um, whereas if it's an integer, it's either 0 or 1. 
So what we're going to do is assign something to our float x and what we're going to say is move speed. So this is the variable that we've created earlier. And what this is going to enable us is to not have to come into Mono Developer just to test something out with a higher speed. So my move speed set to 3.05 currently. So next, comma, space, my rigid body. And what I'm going to do now is C Sharp utilizes full stops to start to dive into um, components. So move speed, yeah, so my rigid body dot velocity, yep, dot y. So essentially what I'm wanting to do is identify if I'm pressing, if there's a number greater than 0, so 0 0.01 means I'm looking to go to the right. Um, to the x, I'm adding a value of move speed. To the y, I'm just doing whatever it's already doing. So if I'm on the ground, I stay on the ground. If I'm jumping and I'm on, I've got momentum in the air, I maintain that momentum. It's been figured out elsewhere. Okay. Uh, and lastly, because we're in a 2D game, I'm going to do comma x and my z value is going to be 0f and this is forcing unity to make it um, only be um, not sorry not moving in depth if anything is moving in depth here we're, we're, we're going to lose ourselves all right so that's our little first subroutine so next after the curly braces I'm going to type in else if and again I'm going to set another set of rules input dot get axi raw. Whoops, what did I do there? Sometimes autocomplete can mess you up if you're not paying attention. Input dot get axi raw. And that's just up and down arrows again. And we're looking at doing horizontal this time again. Get axi raw. Parentheses horizontal. Because we're still looking at horizontal. Um, that's not very good. Horizontal space and we're looking at less than 0f so that would be if it's a minus value which is if we press the left button essentially um, so else if and we're going to go onto a new line and we're going to bring in some new curly braces else if and it's going to be very similar to the line above you can copy and paste this if you really want so it's my rigid body yep dot velocity equals new vector 3 and this is where we're going to change it slightly from the last line of code uh, we're doing a minus move speed so instead of moving 3 we're moving minus 3 which means to the left minus move speed comma and then it's otherwise the same so it's the my rigid body dot velocity dot y so just maintain what we were doing and 0f don't change the depth awesome um, and the semicolon just basically says it's the end of this line of this chunk of code and lastly we've got the else so if it's greater than 0 do this if it's less than 0 we're moving to the left and do this else what else could be happening else and again we'll just establish else we're going to say again we could potentially copy and paste this my rigid body dot velocity equals new vector 3 and what we're basically saying is we're not moving so 0f and then the other lines will be the same so 0f don't have any move speed regardless of what's programmed in our variable uh, my rigid body dot velocity dot y and again 0f don't change the position in depth. Alrighty, um, so what we'll do is we'll save this and then we'll go back to Unity and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so if I just click on player, I might just zoom out a little bit. So press play, press left, that works, if press right, that works, and if I stop, nothing happens. Left, 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 right, 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 awesome. Now I'm in play mode, what I can actually do in real time is with a public variable I can make this happen a lot quicker. Okay, so I can just test to find the optimal value in my game. When I press play this number is going to revert back to what that initial value was. A la 3. Okay, so let's just have a look. Great. 
So I can now move left and right, which is pretty cool, and I can also fall off the edge. Um, in the next video, it's probably been long enough, in the next video I show you how we can do jump and how we can do gravity. Thank you.